When you think of shooter video games, I imagine something like this comes to mind. A military-based warfare-involving setting is what I would say if the majority of popular shooters on the market today are actually starting to adopt more vibrant and modern settings. Games like Apex, Valorant, and Overwatch have overtaken games like COD, CSGO, and Rainbow Six Siege, and it shows that shooters don't have to be a gritty, grungy aesthetic. However, there's still one game that I wish more people gave a shot and didn't ignore. It's the most innovative and unique shooter on the market, and an absolute blast. Don't laugh, but it's Splatoon. <laughs> Splatoon will never ever be mainstream. It just won't. It's a Nintendo game, it's too cartoony to appeal to the core shooter fanbase, it's seen as a kids game, and it's far too different from other shooter games. It's a shame a large number of people never even give it a chance, because despite how goofy it seems on paper, it genuinely is one of the most fun and innovative shooters ever made. Just imagine you're a fully grown adult, married, family of four, and your wife walks in on you playing this. Babe, what is this? Why are you wielding a gun that's shooting out colorful ink? And then you, the Chad, go, because it's fucking fun, okay? Unfortunately, when people think of shooter games, the last console that they would consider is the Nintendo Switch. The console exclusivity is going to take a really big chunk out of Splatoon's possible player base for a couple of reasons. One, not everybody has a Switch. It may be the third best selling video game console of all time, but with over 120 million units sold, that's still not everyone. But or more importantly, the primary audience of shooter games is not the primary audience that has a Switch as a console. So it's more casual gamers that have the Switches, not the dedicated ones. Two, the hardware limit the Switch is from 2017, and when it came out, even then, it was a lot less powerful than something like a PS4 or an Xbox One. Fast forward to 2023, and this thing is basically begging on its hands and knees for a hardware upgrade. The PS5 and Xbox Series X are easily able to output 1440p 120fps visuals, and sometimes even up to 4K at that frame rate. For shooter games, FPS is extremely important, as it makes the game feel infinitely better to play, and it makes it feel a lot more responsive. With the Switch hard cap, 60 FPS, it really feels like we're stuck in the past. Most phones these days even offer 120Hz displays, and the same goes for iPads and PCs, as well as the next-gen consoles. Downgrading from 144 FPS on my PC to 60 on Splatoon just doesn't feel nice. A lot of people who play games these days demand high-fidelity graphics and ultra-smooth frame rates, and as far as the Switch is concerned, you just can't have that. You can't emulate this game either, since it's tied to Nintendo's online network, so if you're gonna bite the bullet, you better be ready for a downgrade. Grade. N3, it's just made by Nintendo, a company widely considered to be for kids. They don't make mature games and they don't cater to mature audiences. They're widely seen as a company just for kids, with the average Nintendo fan being very young or diehards who will defend their shitty decisions until the end of time. Their corporate side also sucks massive f Taking down a YouTube video of your game for showing off mods? Are you insane? Taking down a fan-made Joy-Con project where the proceeds go to charity just because it says Joy-Con on it? Canceling an entire Smash tournament because people are using emulators? It's really not a good look. Combine this with how much they try and exploit people for money with the barely functioning Nintendo Switch Online service and the awful expansion pack. Just so many decisions that I will never understand. Despite the public reception of Nintendo these days, there's a reason that their games are timeless and don't drop in value because they're fucking amazing. Nintendo is the name brand of video games. The Supreme, the Nike, the Apple, you get what I'm saying. They have made some of the most critically acclaimed games ever created, but they're a very old school company. It took Nintendo over 30 years after they started making video games to make a shooter. But honestly, the game that we got is nothing short of special, unique, and phenomenal. Splatoon is without a doubt the most unique shooter you will see on the market today with a semi-dedicated fanbase. Name me a shooter right now that has jellyfishes climbing up rocks in deserts. Exactly. Jokes aside though, while Splatoon looks extremely goofy at first, its distinguishability from other shooters is amazing. Instead of guns, you get ink-based weaponry, which you would assume is to keep the game kid-friendly, but more on that later. It's got super unique character designs with two forms, one for movement, another for using your weapons. I absolutely love the way that the Inklings and Octolings are designed, an incredibly good idea that works out perfect. The overall world is actually vibrant and bustling, unlike most shooters where you barely get to see what goes on outside of the stages. The 
art style of Splatoon is absolutely lovely to look at, and something I really wish we had more of in shooter games. You have an entire world with very deep lore, and everything that connects with each other. Another little thing that's nice about Splatoon is everything happens in-universe. Want to go buy a new weapon? Well, you gotta walk to the store and buy it. Want to load into a match? Go to the arena and queue up. It's all intertwined into perfection. But the cartoony art style has its downside, and that's that the game is seen as strictly for kids. E for everyone. Think about that rating for a sec. Not E for kids, everyone. The game is for everyone. I get it. You play Call of Duty, or you just can't be seen playing a game suitable for younger audiences. Funnily enough, most kids these days are actually playing games that aren't rated for them. How many people who play COD actually follow the M rated 17 plus guideline? Or let's go even younger. How many people play Fortnite who are even 13? It's kind of funny. The main reason I think Splatoon has adopted the whole kids only mantra is part of its terrible advertising campaigns. Obviously, the game is aimed at a younger audience than other shooters, but that doesn't mean people of all ages can't play and enjoy it. If anything, the style of the game should be seen as a positive because it allows both younger kids and adults to get into the game. Because it's not kid-oriented enough to get to the point where it's unplayable for people over the dedicated audience, but it's also great for getting younger kids into the shooter genre. There is a reason the game has sold over 11 million copies in the 9 months it's been on the market, because despite the general perception that it's only for kids, it's still got a mature fanbase, and the mature people who play this game have a damn good reason. It's incredibly fun. Movement shooter games these days are widely considered to be dead. Almost all of them are single player oriented, with the only real exception that's still alive is Apex Legends. With that, Splatoon is currently the second most popular movement shooter on the market, a genre that people seem to want back. So I think it's time to break down Splatoon's best element, the movement. In Splatoon, you have two forms, swim form and kid form. In kid form, you can do normal things like walk around, use your weapons, activate your special weapon, and walk across grates. But where Splatoon becomes a unique game is its swim form. You go from being a slow kid running around to a squid able to swim super quickly through the ink you've already laid down from your weapon in kid form, essentially making moving around the map not only effortless, but also satisfying and fun. The fact that your weapon isn't just a tool for killing, but also to paint up the the map, charge your special, and deny area is extremely powerful. When in swim form, it also refills your ink tank. So when you're in kid form painting, you'll have more area to swim in and the cycle keeps on going. Swim form also gives you the ability to swim up walls meaning some maps have an extra layer of depth you'll always have to watch out for. And of course, like other movement shooters, there's a lot of tech and skill to build. Substrafes, squid rolls, dodge rolls on dually weapons that you can incorporate into a squid roll, and then substrafe into a dodge roll into a squid roll, you get the idea. The transition between these two forms is also instant, meaning you can easily launch yourself into a fight and then destroy everyone. Another thing is the limitations of each form. For example, in swim form, you can't cross grates, meaning there's even more depth to the system than just moving around, because some areas might give you an extremely good angle or advantage, but at the cost of not being able to move away quickly or putting yourself into the open. And all of this joins together into a silky smooth and extremely fun movement system, one of the best in shooter games. Movement ties directly into the foundation of Splatoon, and without it, you are starting to lean into a reskin of a normal shooter. But we also still have to talk about the weapons. There are a total of 11 main weapon classes in Splatoon, with over 90 weapons in total, not to mention the 14 sub weapons and 17 special weapons. Oh, also, and the game is still being updated and more are being added. You go from the typical shooter to a fucking umbrella. Each of the 11 classes has one feature that makes them unique and their playstyle different. On dualies, you can do that sick-ass dodge roll to move around super clean. On umbrellas, you have a shield that you can use to completely block fire. Blasters fire AoE attacks that can make them hard to play around in some circumstances. Buckets have a projectile arc that can be flung around surfaces. You get the idea. It also helps that this game is extremely fast paced. If you've got 20 minutes open, you can't exactly fit in a game of Valorant or maybe a game of Apex in that time. Splatoon, however, each match is only a max of 5 minutes, meaning you can probably fit in a solid 3 matches at least in that time. It also helps that the UI is extremely snappy and streamlined, and you can get to whatever you need to do really quickly. The gameplay truly is the cream of the crop here. However, with how unique it is, you have to ask, is it too different from other shooters? 
Change is a touchy subject because everyone likes different levels of it. However, the general consensus is this. If you change nothing, people get angry and want change, get bored, and look for something new. But if you change too much, it messes up what they're used to and they will also go looking for something else. You need the perfect balance of novelty and familiarity. I've spent the former of this video discussing how unique the game is, but honestly, it might be too big of a jump for some people. Another thing that drastically turns people off is the control schemes. Splatoon obviously has traditional twin stick controls. However, almost unlike all shooter games on consoles, there's no aim assist, meaning everything is raw input. You're probably asking why, to which there's actually another control scheme in the game, motion controls. This may be the least noob friendly control scheme available on the market, but oh my god, it's actually amazing. It brings the precision of a mouse to a controller, and while it takes a while to get used to, once you do, it's basically impossible to go back. Combine the precision of motion controls with the stick for movement, and this game is truly a joy to play. Games like Fortnite have started to adopt motion controls in recent times, and for a good reason. It's a great scheme that has a bright future ahead of it. Another thing that might turn people off is the fact that in Splatoon, you don't just kill. In Splatoon, you have to play the objective, and getting kills is just something that can help you do that. There isn't a straight deathmatch mode. You've gotta adhere to what you're supposed to do. But with all of this, I still think the vast majority of people who enjoy shooting will be able to adapt no problem. Unfortunately, with all that I've mentioned throughout the video, the game isn't perfect and it does have its fair share of flaws. The map design has seen better days, the online service is absolutely abysmal, the game has a severe lack of content. However, for someone getting into the game, these issues don't mean much at first and it only becomes a problem once you've been playing for a while and are ready to step into a more competitive side of the game. This game is still truly phenomenal and well worth giving it a shot. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video and are now considering trying the game, I highly recommend it. It truly is one of the most innovative and fun shooter games we've had on the market, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you're new here, go check out some other videos on my channel to learn a little more about the game. And if you're already a Splatoon player, this is your excuse to send the video to a friend and get them into the game. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.